Hi fellow StarCraft II enthusiasts. So this video is dedicated to those of you who have already dropped 325 bucks on a Core i7, you know, 2600 Sandy Bridge processor to a point where, you know, you basically max out your CPU um, as far as how much you can spend on it and you're still dropping down to, you know, fr 40 frames per second, 20 frames per second during intense battles and your video card you know you thought your video card was a problem so you go out and get a GTX 460 but that's not enough so then you switch to a 580 GTX and, and still you're, you're not seeing much better performance so what's actually going on here is that you know up till this time Tom's hardware has determined that CPU is actually the very strong bottleneck um, centered around StarCraft 2 performance so what's interesting is that Blizzard gives you all these unique tweaks to performance that you have access to, yet uh, there hasn't really been any intense uh, review upon changing any of these individually. So interestingly enough, all of these settings come with a, you know, a pretty clear description of what's actually going on. And uh, it tells you if this setting is you know, either CPU intensive or graphics intensive. and if you actually take the time to play around with these settings you can actually get away with putting everything on ultra and extreme and not experiencing any sort of lag in the game or a sudden drop in frame rate at all so I found out that the single most important variable that uh, determines your frame rate from the start of the game to the end of the game is actually this models setting um, so I'm sure some of you may have noticed that at the beginning of the game you'll get well over 200 frames per second and then by the end of the game you'll drop to a 4 for that you'll have 40 frames 50 frames especially in 4 versus 4s in, in basically maps where there are just tons and tons of units so model quality all models are unique and higher quality on high settings so what this literally means is that every time you have a group of marines you have a pack of banglings and zerglings running around every individual unit's movement is calculated uniquely now you can imagine how much of a performance hit or how much of a performance difference it would be to calculate each individual unit's movements uniquely versus all of them sharing a simple model. Now just think of this in terms of StarCraft 1 when every time you had a group of Hydras or a group of Marines and you tell them to move somewhere they all moved in sequence all moved in sequence and they all took the same step and that was just one simple calculation so now what's in, what ends up happening is that every time you create an extra unit and you put it on the map that unit is unique and requires a new calculation and this would and this pattern that you're seeing you know is exactly explained by the fact that your frame rate would start out so high yet by the end of the game it would drop to a 4 for that it's this setting alone that explains all of that now when you experiencing when you're experiencing the stuttering and uh, every time you have a lot of units on the screen that's actually explained by the physics interacting with the models so you can imagine how every time you get into an intense battle having unique models calculated intertwined with the physics of units blowing up splattering around and breaking up you can imagine how these two settings would compound upon each other to actually just kill your CPU completely so if you simply put these two settings on low or you know just reduce them somewhat you will get significantly better performance and by significant you know in terms of numbers we're, we're looking at you know a frame rate drop from 200 something to only 100 something as opposed to 30 something or just simply to a point where there's a heavy response time between your mouse clicking and what actually happens on the screen um, basically input lag or screen lag that you're getting from you know the CPU being somewhat taxed by all of these unique models so I uh, encourage everybody to take a closer look at all these settings that are labeled as CPU intensive and uh, you know you will no longer no longer be disappointed by having a core i7 basically the fastest pro processors that money can buy and yet not getting the optimal performance that you're looking for Alright, stay tuned for more to come.